previous videos you learnt about the two mechanisms of cellular respiration. One is aerobic respiration in which glucose is converted to energy or ATP in the presence of oxygen and the other is anaerobic respiration in which glucose is used to produce energy in the absence of oxygen. In this video we are going to see where exactly in the cell these processes take place. First let's start with anaerobic respiration. So there are two main mechanisms by which anaerobic respiration can take place. One is the ethanol fermentation which is commonly found in yeast cells. The ethanol fermentation is what makes yeast be used in the breweries and in the process of making bread. We'll learn exactly why in just a while. So in the process of ethanol fermentation, glucose is converted to ethanol, carbon dioxide and a little energy is released. The other mechanism is the lactic acid fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, glucose is converted to lactic acid and energy is also produced. Again, the energy that is produced in the lactic acid fermentation method is much less compared to the energy that can be produced in aerobic respiration. Be it ethanol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation, the energy that is produced is much less compared to the aerobic respiration. Now this lactic acid fermentation commonly occurs in lactic acid bacteria but it is also found in muscle cells. We will learn exactly why it can occur in muscle cells in just a while. First let's start with ethanol fermentation and try to figure out where it happens within the cell. So before we begin, I will ask a question. Do you think there is any process that is common between aerobic and anaerobic mechanism of respiration? You will be able to answer this question by the end of the video. So let's begin with ethanol fermentation. In yeast cells, initially glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate which is a 3 carbon compound. So what happens is this 6 carbon glucose is broken down essentially to give two 3 carbon molecules. This 3 carbon molecule is known as pyruvate and this step is the first step of cellular respiration. This is known as glycolysis because it is the breakdown of glucose. Glyco refers to glucose and lysis means to break down. So glycolysis is the first step in anaerobic respiration in ethanol fermentation where glucose is broken down to two molecules of pyruvate. Two molecules of ATP, some amount of energy is produced in this process. So this process takes place in the cytoplasm only, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm only and pyruvate also undergoes the next process in the cytoplasm itself. So in the ethanol fermentation process, the 3 carbon pyruvate is converted to 2 carbon ethanol and the additional carbon that is missing here that is released as carbon dioxide. Now this is why yeasts are commonly used in the baking and brewing industry. The ethanol produced here that is what is needed in the brewery industry to make beer, wine etc. The carbon dioxide produced is why you see bubbles in the process of making beer and wine. This carbon dioxide is also what causes bread to rise when we are using yeast to bake bread. So this entire process of ethanol fermentation, this anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm itself. There is no need for any other cell organelle to be involved here. All enzymes that are needed for this process are found in the cytoplasm itself. What about lactic acid fermentation? Lactic acid fermentation commonly occurs in lactic acid bacteria but it is also found in our muscle cells. What am I talking about? I thought we needed oxygen to survive, we breathe in oxygen right to survive. How then can skeletal muscles perform lactic acid fermentation in the absence of oxygen? Well this takes place when we are performing heavy exercise. Under strenuous conditions when there is less availability of oxygen in the cells, muscle cells, the skeletal muscle cells especially that are working over time during exercise, they resort to lactic acid fermentation to produce energy. So how does this lactic acid fermentation take place? Initially, glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate by the process of glycolysis. This takes place in the cytoplasm, fantastic. Again, because it's anaerobic respiration, there is no need for any other cell organelle to be involved. So within the cytoplasm itself, pyruvate is converted to lactate, which is a form of lactic acid. Now lactic acid is also a 3 carbon molecule, so pyruvate is also a 3 carbon molecule. There is no carbon dioxide that is released here. 
but instead this lactic acid begins to accumulate within the muscle cells and the accumulation of this lactate is what causes muscle cramps when we are exercising heavily the reason why we get cramps sometimes is because of the accumulation of this lactic acid later when we stop exercising and we begin to breathe normally the amount of oxygen in the body starts to increase so oxygen concentration increases within the cells and as the oxygen concentration increases skeletal muscle cells begin to abandon this lactic acid fermentation and continue with normal aerobic mechanism of respiration and that is when this lactic acid is also broken down or degraded which is why our cramps also go away after some time finally let's talk about the aerobic mechanism of respiration aerobic respiration also begins with the conversion of glucose to two molecules of pyruvate this also occurs by the process of glycolysis in the cytoplasm now you can answer my question which process is common between both aerobic and anaerobic mechanisms of respiration if you guessed glycolysis you're right glycolysis is the first step in cellular respiration be it anaerobic or aerobic that is the first step that converts glucose to two molecules of pyruvate now in aerobic respiration pyruvate doesn't just stay in the cytoplasm it is moved to the mitochondria which is rightly termed the powerhouse of the cell because this is where the maximum amount of energy is produced in our cells this process of glycolysis also yields a little bit of energy but the maximum amount of atp is produced in the mitochondria what happens to pyruvate within the mitochondria so initially within the mitochondrial matrix the pyruvate is converted to acetyl coa now pyruvate is a three carbon molecule acetyl coa is a two carbon molecule what happens to this additional carbon that is released as carbon dioxide this is what we exhale out then this acetyl coa enters this citric acid cycle or the krebs cycle where it is converted to citric acid the citric acid cycle is a cyclical process which eventually regenerates the citric acid but we are not mainly interested in the citric acid we are interested in the products of the citric acid cycle the products of the citric acid cycle are then finally used to produce the maximum amount of energy and these products finally use oxygen in the mitochondria to produce energy and the final equation for aerobic respiration is one molecule of glucose with six molecules of oxygen to give six molecules of carbon dioxide six molecules of water and 38 molecules of atp this includes the atp that was formed in glycolysis and the citric acid cycle krebs cycle ideally from one molecule of glucose we are able to get 38 atp the actual number is not 38 actual number is slightly lower in an ideal situation from one molecule of glucose we should be able to get 38 molecules of atp why is the energy even stored in the form of atp glucose contains energy fine but when glucose is broken down why don't the cells use the energy as it is why do they need to store it in the form of atp we'll answer that question in another video